Now obviously in here we're gonna be rendering our meals, but we don't have any meals to render yet. So I think often like the first function to make would be the create page. So let's set this one up. So in order to get something into the database and set up the database, uh, we first need a submit page uh, to have anything to display. So let's get a new page up and running. We're gonna create a new folder and call it page dash new meal, I wanna call that. Now the, the naming here is actually quite important. It's pages dash new meal. And you can change the naming, but then you have to make sure that you change the respective files so it knows where to look because everything is hooking up automatically and expecting things to be laid out in a certain way. Now inside here, we create a new file, uh, a handlebars file, could create the CSS file. Grunt will automatically expect to look in these directories and compile these new files. Um, all our handlebars files start with this save as uh, structure, which is used to split them into multiple and we can write like little modules without having a million of files on our system to worry about. And I find this is a much easier way to work with. And this is our own little custom grunt runner, which does this. New meal, and we're gonna call this new the main. So on our new meal page, we want to have uh, the same structure with the content for the white window that we created on the other one. The new meal page will obviously be displaying uh, the form of the meal and when it successfully was submitted or if there was any problems with the submission. So we're gonna create a, a form one right away. In handlebars, it's really easy to, to nest the HTML. So we just put a little arrow in the squirrel here and do that. Let's just uh, start, we're gonna need a title. I often just like laying out what we need to do. Uh, we're gonna need a description. We're gonna need an image to be uploaded and um, author or signature of the meal. Uh, these are handlebar comments, uh, very handy. They won't be rendered into the HTML, so here you can write anything you want and it will be stripped away from the user so they don't want to see lots of comments in the HTML. I'm gonna skip the, the image one for now and we're gonna just... So let's see how that renders. Well, obviously we need to go to the create page. Ah, <clears throat> getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here. Obviously it doesn't link up completely all of magic automatically. We need to add this page into our app. And in here, if we copy this pages line, add one for create. And the uh, name of this page is, uh, and it's not gonna be called your project, is it? I'm gonna call this uh, Lunch Love. Uh, we're not gonna run any API call there for now, so we're gonna leave this empty. So, with um, our new little line here, and fix it and tidy it up a little bit, I think we have an unexpected error, <laughs> as always. Yes, we are missing a little square bracket. Let's see now. No more syntax errors. Yes. Okay. That error came because after we create new pages, um, Grunt doesn't know that we have created new files for it to watch. So we're just gonna cancel Grunt and restart Grunt and when we hit save on this, it Grunt's gonna run again and compile our handlebars and we got the page loading correctly. Now, this looks pretty terrible. I'm gonna throw in a bit of a sass into this. Save that and let's see what that gives us. Right, now that's looking a little bit better. Seems like I missed one thing, which is the border radius. So we just need to get um, the image tag in as well. Now the, the default uh, HTML image input looks pretty terrible and we're gonna do a little, little fix to make that look a bit nicer. Let's just see how the initial one looks. And it looks like that. It's not terrible. Uh, and if I just pick a random file from my desktop, it looks like that. But it's not quite what we're looking for 
compared to this one, which is uh, the finished version. So with a bit of uh, HTML and CSS, we can make this look much nicer. That's the HTML. We have a little data text here with the original text of this because we're going to change the content of the label depending on the file name of what we uploaded. And if the user cancels, we want to revert again. So in, as if in this example, if I go here and press cancel, it will turn back to the original text. And that's why we have the text stored here as well. And we're going to be doing that part in JavaScript. Now there's um, this button here isn't very pretty looking and we're going to be fixing up these ones uh, quickly a little bit. We're going to be making a button class. Okay, there we have our little <clears throat> button class written up. Let's see how that looks in action. Right, there we go. Pretty, pretty. There's a couple of problems there, obviously. We want it to be the right size. Aha, there's one thing we're missing. We are missing our little uh, automatic sizer. So with that, all our buttons should be sizing dynamically uh, between the two standard sizes we are really using on this page. Obviously, this is not looking so pretty. Now we have to hide the input. And what we're going to do here is uh, actually not hide it completely, but make it invisible. The reason we're making it invisible and not um, removing it completely is because then you can still tab navigate to it and if you're only using the keyboard you can still fill out the form. There we go. Because what's happening if we tab tab, we have tabbed in here now and I can press space and it will open up this uh, and tab next one. And it's because if we inspect here, we can see that our input is placed right here as a little hidden thing so we can tab navigate to it but really we're pushing the label button in order to access it as long as the four and the id are matching they can click on each other so we got our little upload button looking nice and fancy but it doesn't quite function because when we select the file it doesn't say anything so we need to do a little bit of javascript to get that part working i'm gonna just create a little extra file there and whenever i create new files i always restart to grunt. Uh, I'm using a jQuery here just to make things a little bit easier for ourselves. So let's just quickly run through this. We go to the input and hook it up to basically this one here where we have the ID picture. Well, I guess I could have come with the hash ID, doesn't matter. We do on change in uh, jQuery. We fetch the ID of this, which is picture, um, as it could be a bit of a generic one in case we had all of the buttons. Then obviously we don't want to change uh, this one. We want to change this text here. So we fetch the label four. So we have both of those. And then we fetch the value of this one. And that can be expected to be C colon slash uh, fake path slash and then the file name and um, it's unnecessary to show that part so we're removing that with uh, replace with nothing and if that's a valid value we update the label with html uh, otherwise we just reset it back to the original and then we refer to this data text uh, here so let's see if this works now it says we have an error on line four and yes i see what the error is there we go if I reload this page now, and we can tab navigate down here even, hit space and select our file, and there we go. We now just change the HTML inside here, and if we go in and cancel it, it will switch back again. Anyway, we are going to do a test here and uh, submit our magic. That just cleared the form out, obviously, because we're not receiving it and not putting any data back into it and all that magic, which we're going to be doing. Now, I tried to rush a little bit with the front end because I want to get into the, the back end programming.